How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame, and we are back with another FPL video. And just before we get right into that, I'm going to be doing a deadline day stream, Pilot Flame 226. If you go follow us over there on Twitch, that's where we'll be doing it. It'll be at 11.30 a.m. EST. That is going to be one hour before the 12.30 p.m. EST kickoff between Norwich and Burnley. I still don't know what I'm going to be doing with my transfers. And if you don't, then you can come on over and you can ask some questions in the chat. But as for the video today, it's another rendition of buy hold and sell haven't been too good with the sells recently but hopefully we can pick that up this week i'm i'm, I'm, I'm a bit confident this week uh, some of our buys and holds have been okay but again we'll kind of have to see how they kind of played out and how we did last week so let's check out how we did in game week 36 plus so in our previous game week in game week 36 plus these are the players that we chose to buy hold and sell we have antonio who got his fixture still to play in gaming 36 plus he plays today at the time of recording versus Watford at home and I think he's going to do quite well in that we brought in Olivier Giroud in our own team instead of Jamie Vardy and he got us six points which is you know more than enough for someone who was more of a punt basically once we saw the early team news so I was quite happy with that but it only went downhill from there unfortunately for my team as for those who kept Christian Pulisic they were rewarded with a little assist getting six points you know a captaincy of 12 points doesn't seem to be too bad Bad, considering the likes of some people captain De Bruyne and then vice captain other players and then I ended up getting one or two points much like myself because I captain Raheem Sterling and he got me only two points in total and it just wasn't a great week another player that we also told to, to hang on to because we thought he'd be revitalized coming back in the team was Trent Alexander-Arnold this obviously wasn't the case he got zero points picking himself up a yellow conceding two goals it wasn't great really and with Liverpool being a very system driven based team and the lack of Jordan Henderson due to injury I think that Liverpool may be you know defensively at least kind of shipping out their assets if you can do so or if you can afford the luxury to free up that money for something else whether it be a more expensive forward or beefing up the midfield or what have you or maybe just a cheaper defender that just is going to be better in the last two fixtures mainly the likes of Burnley or potentially Southampton could be options there but overall I think that Trent was ideally a good hold but with Liverpool just kind of their minds basically being on vacation as well as them spending the majority of lockdown already knowing that they won the league they've kind of lowered their levels significantly and with the absence of Jordan Henderson the intensity is definitely going down as well and it doesn't get much better with the cells either if you did sell Harry Kane I, I apologize for that he scored two goals and got 12 points in gaming 36 plus versus Newcastle albeit it was off two shots and he scored two goals it's not you know fair in a sense because his xg wouldn't have been that high spurs xg overall wasn't very high they didn't deserve really to score three goals but harry kane is obviously a clinical finisher so i guess there is some deserving you know qualities in that so credit to harry kane obviously he wants you know he needs to be playing well in order for england to do well in the euros next year and he's got to pick it up because Spurs are still looking for a Europa League spot. And then lastly, the man we took out for Olivier Giroud was Jamie Vardy. He got one point less at five points, but still a return. So if you did take him out for the likes of Danny Ings or Giroud, you weren't you know, too upset because you still ended up with a couple more points. But overall, it was a, not the greatest sell if you got someone in that blanked for Jamie Vardy as he still ended up getting a return. So let's go check out what we chose for our buys for game week 37 plus. So the first player on our buy list is none other than Danny Ings. The, the man is just a goal scoring machine. He scored again against Brighton, obviously getting a 1-1 draw for his team. He's got 20 goals in the Premier League and he's still in for the golden boot. He's only three behind Jamie Vardy. And with Vardy having, you know, kind of these tougher fixtures on paper versus Spurs and then versus Manchester United. Vardy's goal drought may come sooner than we than we think. Obviously, he has been on fire and he has been creating a lot of key passes, but he may be uh, slowing down a bit there where Ings can kind of shoot up the ranks because he does play a weaker, potentially relegated side in Bournemouth. And then he plays, you know, Sheffield United on the final day of the season and overall could be just very good just going forward he has had 10 shots in his last three every single one of those 10 shots has been in the box so that's obviously something that could be quite useful for a striker that is 7.5 million and scoring for fun and 
he's had two goals in the last three, so he's not scoring every game, but he is pretty much doing so. And he does well statistically versus lesser teams or teams in the bottom half of the table. And he also has an underlying stat that may not be looked at quite significantly as it should be, but he has had four key passes in his last three games as well. And as a cheaper forward option, he could potentially be getting more assists than what he has this season. Obviously, he only has two in the in the all you know all the games that he's played in the Premier League. So he could be potentially getting more points there. He maybe he gets an extra assist or two before the season's out. But he's definitely going to be looking to score those goals. And he's going to be doing that if you bring him into your team for the last two game weeks. And the other player on our buy list is none other than Anthony Martial. He's had five shots in the box in the last three games out of a total of seven. He's got two goals, two assists, and he only has one less key pass than Bruno Fernandes with six in the last three games. Bruno Fernandes racking up seven. And that's kind of a, you know, something that we don't literally attribute to Martial in a sense, mainly because we think he's just going to be the guy in the box. He's going to do a one-two. He's going to receive the ball and then score. But those key passes are, are for the likes of Rashford. They're for the likes of Mason Greenwood, for the likes of Bruno Fernandes taking shots outside the box or inside the box. And it could be a stat that may be boosted slightly. He does have seven assists this season. I can see him potentially going over the double-digit mark before the season is out, especially with their two fixtures remaining. And I think he could easily hit the 20-goal tally as well, given their last two fixtures versus the Leicester side on the last game of the season that could potentially be well and truly just depleted by the time United go to play them and as well as a West Ham side that if they were to win versus Watford today would be pretty much 99.9% .9 guaranteed that they're going to be safe from relegation so they may just kind of field a bunch of youngsters or something like that and then United is able to kind of sweep by and get a big points total mainly helping out their goal difference which would effectively help out Martial and other United assets. Also, with the number of shots, he's had obviously three less shots than the likes of Danny Ings. However, he's clinical in moving like a man with confidence. Like in the goal versus Crystal Palace that they scored their second goal, it was just a quick movement. Rashford did a lot of the leg work. Bruno Fernandes, quick pass inside, one touch into Martial. Martial takes a touch, sets himself, bends it around the goalkeeper. He only needs one shot to score and it's insane every time he's inside the box and gets that chance he typically is putting it away now and that type of confidence you just can't buy with a forward and with Fernandez I think these two are the best duo in terms of what you want in your FPL teams I think the having these two as potential captaincy options like I have this week I'm either going to captain Martial or Fernandez most likely given my current setup and I think that you guys should be looking at these types of players because a combination of these two being under 20 million they're not like city assets where they're like 10 million plus for like Sterling and and De Bruyne and for their prices this season especially with Martial being a midfielder rather than a forward which he's likely to change to next season I think that it's better to get his points as soon as you can because he is a man possessed right now and he's definitely a good buy going into game week 37 plus. Now moving on to the holds this week, I know a lot of people have been kind of thinking about rotating players out. If you did it for game week 36 and you brought in a Liverpool asset, you were potentially rewarded for that. However, you know, Salah didn't actually score. Mane did, so if you did bring in Mane, that was quite good. And you may have gotten rid of the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. But I think if you still have him like you, like I do in my own team, I think he's definitely going to be one to keep for game week 37 and potentially look to rotate him out in maybe game week 38, depending on if City go to the FA Cup final. He'll be rested mainly because he wanted to be played in the FA Cup semifinal versus Arsenal. They're most likely going to go full strength. I expect the front line of Jesus... Mares and Sterling to play up the front. I expect the likes of De Bruyne and Rodri to be in the midfield with maybe Gundogan or somebody else in the midfield. And then their standard back four and Ederson and goal in that game. In the Watford game in 37, he's probably going to see some minutes of some kind. I don't think Pep's just going to play him in the cup final, not play him for two, uh, the cup semifinal rather, not play him for two games and then hope he plays in the final I still think he had you know he allows City to do things that they wouldn't otherwise normally be able to do and City as we saw in the Bournemouth game weren't nearly as threatening in transition and in terms of their attacks Bournemouth out shotting them by um a double I think it was 15 to 8 I could be wrong on that step but I think it was something like that at, at a point and that's the most shots that Pep Guardiola's team has conceded since he's been manager of Man City I think was the stat which is which is crazy to think about if that's true and I think that De Bruyne obviously being someone with so many goal involvements, 32 and 33 games, 
He just has to play for Man City, even if it's 60 minutes. Just go in, get in there, Pep, put him in the team, and just let him go crazy for the first 60 minutes. You go up 5-0, and then you take off your ha half your team. That's what you should be doing. That's what Man United's doing. So I wish you could do that with the FPL assets. But no, I understand why he does it. He wants to preserve him for the Champions League, which they're definitely going to be going for that. And with their ban being rescinded, if they go into next season with the you know, this aura that they are the current Champions League winning champion holders and they are, you know, conceivably seen as the best team in Europe. They'll be looking to kind of take that motivation into the next season going versus Liverpool toe-to-toe -to -toe for the title. And with the likes of Man United and Chelsea and these sorts of teams kind of creeping up and potentially looking as challengers for the title next season with a few signings here and there. Chelsea obviously already making a few attacking ones and United looking at the likes of those then it could be something to where Kevin De Bruyne will definitely play a key part into that season. And with such a quick turnaround, you don't want to get a long-standing injury because if you do, then you're out for basically until after Christmas time, most likely. And I think Kevin De Bruyne, I understand the rest rotation, but I think definitely holding him for this week because I think he'll see minutes versus Watford, even if he does play in the FA Cup semi-final. Now, the other hold I have for this week is Matt Doherty. He was rested and still came on and scored an assist, getting at least one shot when he came on, even only in the 18 minutes. You see that this type of defender in Matt Doherty, the way he plays in Wolf's system, he likes to get forward, he likes to be active, and I think it was more of a resting kind of rotation type of fixture. Otherwise, he wouldn't have came on for 18 minutes. Clearly, Nuno Espirito Santo thought he could get away with resting him. Unfortunately, they were cheated out, in my opinion, with the handball. I think he's trying to protect his face from a potential overhead kick, which is more or less a foot or less away from him in Chris Wood. And Doherty's trying to protect himself. He was lucky, however, with getting that assist because it was a shot that resulted in that. And that was his one shot in the 18 minutes that he was on there. But I think he's definitely going to be a good asset going forward in the last two game weeks. The clean sheets are definitely still there. He's going to be a big part of what Wolves do because they still have Europa League football that they're still in and potentially could go all the way given the fixtures that they may or may not end up facing in that competition. And I think that, you know, Wolves may have lost some points and may have, you know, down their confidence. But I think defensively, they still look strong even when these decisions are, aren't going their way. And I think that Doherty is going to be one that he's going to play in the last two game weeks for sure. Because I think he is their best offensive threat apart from Trier in terms of creation. And the midfield just kind of looks a bit bit stagnant and they're kind of just relying on the likes of him or Trier to kind of get down the wing and swing a ball in. And apart from that, they kind of just two banks of five and just have everyone just defend for the most part that's kind of how they played versus Burnley and overall I think that Doherty should be in the team he's probably going to be in the team like I mentioned for the next two game weeks as well as going into the European competition so I think he's definitely a hold I have him in my team and I wouldn't get rid of any of your Wolves defenders or, or goalkeeper if you do have them going into game week 37 plus and the first player we have on our sell list is none other than Ben Foster. He's only got 3.6 average points over the whole season, only keeping 9 clean sheets. He's very low owned and his fixtures have run out. He has Manchester City next at home, which isn't a great fixture for him on paper at all. I think that they're going to concede. I just think that he's already, you know, not a very good asset to begin with. The likes of McCarthy, Pope... Patricio, you name it, where goalkeepers getting clean sheets and getting save points more than Foster were. And Watford just seemed to be kind of struggling a little bit. They could still be fighting for relegation, which is something to potentially play for. But I think their defense is just not showing enough to warrant Foster as a goalkeeper pick over the likes of McCarthy or Poe. If you stuck with him for this long, you probably had planned to get him out in 37, whether it be on a free hit or just a free transfer of some kind. I think it's definitely going to be worth it over the next two game weeks. And there are better options to rotate out a goalkeeper rather than a defender in the current game state. So the, the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold, as an example, an expensive asset that is currently underperforming for his price. However, he could still be quite good versus Newcastle or Chelsea and potentially get some points there. Whereas the likes of a goalkeeper that just constantly concedes is just going to be one to two points max in the entire game. Week, whereas you can, can spend, you know, an extra 0 0.2, 0 0.3 million to pretty much guarantee a clean sheet in 
Pope versus Norwich or the likes of Patricio versus Crystal Palace. These sorts of players can get you clean sheets, whereas Foster doesn't seem to be doing that. So I definitely think he's a sell for me going into game week 37 plus. And last but not least on our sell list, we have a, none other than Chelsea's Willian. He sits at 7.4 million, and I think that he could just be one of those players that is just not as good as Pulisic, unfortunately. He's not got many assets going for him, apart from the fact that he takes set pieces. Yes, those are quite important, but how often do free kicks go in? How often do you get a penalty in a game? I mean, with Pulisic going into the box, they might get a lot of penalties, especially with him versus Liverpool and Joe Gomez showing that he likes to take players down, basically, with Raheem Sterling getting taken down when they played each other in the 5 0 thrashing that City gave Liverpool a few weeks ago. But I just think that his underlying stats just aren't as good as Pulisic's going into the final two game weeks. I think Willian is just kind of tiring a little bit. Obviously, he's not in the prime of his career anymore. He's in the twilight of it. And I think that Pulisic is probably a better asset. If you have both of them, you would get rid of Willian over Pulisic in that regard. The last two fixtures also favor Pulisic in that Liverpool's defense is more susceptible to players running at it. The likes of Joe Gomez or Pete players getting in behind and Pulisic favors that, whereas Willian's not the type of player that's going to run in behind. He's going to look to take players on and potentially whip a cross in or cut in and shoot, which Liverpool are perfectly capable of dealing with. And with Liverpool not really playing too seriously, I think that Pulisic could be more of a surprise factor towards them, whereas Willian, you kind of know what you're going to get out of him, and Liverpool players just going to stand him up, which is kind of just basic defending it, and that's the case versus Willian, whereas you have to do a lot more to prevent Pulisic doing what he wants to do so I think that William is worse in that regard and he can be moved on if you still want to keep a Chelsea you know midfielder versus Liverpool he can be moved on for the likes of Man United or Man City assets and as an example for the underlying stats as we mentioned versus Norwich he had two shots I put up three there two shots and uh, only one of them was actually in open play, which had an XG of 0 0.04, so it wasn't really likely going in. And the other one was a free kick, which he, I believe, hit into the wall or something like that. But most of the chances came from Giroud, his, he was the focal point. Giroud could have potentially scored two or three. And I just think that Willian overall, last couple of games, he hasn't really impressed me too much. However, my cells haven't been great, but I think that this one's kind of a bit more of an educated guess as his average points are slipping below five now. And I think that it's just one of those things where he's not going to get any better with the remaining fixtures. Wolves and, and Liverpool just stylistically aren't teams that he's going to be able to get past. Maybe Wolves a little bit more because they kind of sit back and will let him shoot, but they'll still put in blocks in. And I just think that it's a good sell for it this game week coming up. And that's going to do it for this FPL video. Make sure to leave a comment down below as to which player you're going to be buying this week. Players you may be inclined to hang on to for a week or two. And players that you're just going to be getting rid of your team and selling them all together. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And make sure to turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Also, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, make sure to follow us over on Twitter and Twitch. It's Pilot flame 226 in those platforms that's what we'll be posting when we go live for our deadline streams and our game week previews and we would enjoy the interaction over there as i mentioned 11 30 a.m est one hour before the deadline before the burnley versus norwich game we're going to be doing a stream over on twitch pilot flame 226 as we mentioned for questions that you may have you can come on over and ask me about transfer questions i'm still going to be contemplating what i'm doing because i still don't know even though i think the smart play is to take Giroud out for danny ings and also i will be posting my lineup of what i currently have right now and kind of putting my thoughts in that rather than uh this is going to be my official team i'll have most of my thoughts kind of out in that video and i think that it's going to be one that could potentially change and almost certainly will change depending on how things go over on the deadline stream so that's going to do it hope you all enjoyed it hope to see you over on the live stream as well 11 30 a.m est tomorrow and we hope to see you there and until the next one take care